With the insane success of Street Fighter 2, the definition of what a fighting game was became clear. Two characters on a 2D plane with their own health bars with one main objective, deplete the opposite player's health bar to zero. But as time went on, there were other creative minds that had their own perspective of what a fighting game could be. Someone thought it'd be cool to allow the player to break the 2D plane and jump into 3D. Some stayed mostly 2D, but gave you a sidestep button. Others thought it'd be cooler to fight as a team. And at some point, someone thought, what if we turned Super Mario into a fighting game? With each generational leap in gaming came with tons of different types of fighting games. So much so that subgenres of fighting games had to be created. Despite these wild differences with each subgenre, there was one consistent rule that each and every single fighting game shared. But despite all of this, there are still people that don't consider the brand new and highly anticipated Dragon Ball Sparking Zero a fighting game. While Dragon Ball Sparking Zero was in early access phase, it managed to get a whopping 91,000 players on Steam alone, and currently sitting at over 122,000 players worldwide. Sparking Zero also managed to outdo Street Fighter VI and Tekken 8 both for fighting games first day highest concurrent player numbers on Steam. With this news out there, there were mostly praise from the gaming industry, but there were some FGC members that weren't too fond of the fact that Sparking Zero was being compared to more traditional fighters like Street Fighter VI and Tekken 8. Instead of going over a million and one reasons as to why Sparking Zero and Arena Fighters as a whole are indeed fighting games, I went ahead and grabbed a few comments and tweets around this entire discussion and see if any of these can genuinely debunk the idea that Arena Fighters are indeed fighting games. I cannot understand how DBSZ and fighting games are comparable. Two of those games are tailor-made to a competitive audience. Meanwhile, Yamcha can't beam struggled his ultimate with Omega Shinran because it's lore accurate. If we're using level of competition as an argument for what should be considered a fighting game, then Arena Fighters should 1000% be considered fighting games. The comp scene for Arena Fighters I recently learned are super dedicated and passionate about their games and even run tournaments and have Discord servers dedicated to improving at these games. Traditional fighters obviously have a more lucrative comp scene. But if money ever stops someone from being competitive at a game, then Melty Blood community wouldn't exist. Hell, the building blocks of the FGC is passion and love for the game. And that's no different with Arena Fighters. Also, about that lore accurate thing with Spark and Zero, I wouldn't say that's entirely the case, especially when things like this exist. It's still kind of annoying to me that people compare anime arena fighters to traditional fighting games. I hear it's a good game though, so pop off IG. I've seen this exact comment echoed by few others in the FGC, and it's actually insane to me that two subgenres of fighting games being compared is looked at as a bad thing. Overwatch, Valorant, and Call of Duty. All three of these games are both considered shooters, correct? One is categorized as a hero shooter. Another one is categorized as a tactical shooter and the other is categorized as an arcade shooter. There's a laundry list of things that make all three different from each other. But regardless of those differences, they all share one rule that determines if it's a shooter. Regardless of how different arena fighters are from traditional fighters, the entire premise and intention behind the creation of these two are the same. Since that's the case, there are both fighting games. Are they the same? No but they're still fighting games at the end of the day. Playing this game like it's a traditional fighting game is one of the quickest ways to take the fun out of it. If I want to win, I'll just play Whis. Just so you know, Whis is ass in Sparking Zero. Yeah. The people that think the BT games are fighting games are the sort of people that play Mario Party competitively. Man, if you want to talk about some Mario Party ass fighting games, people travel to play this. The game looks great, but I can't stand the comparisons either. People actually want to run brackets and are taking it seriously, lol.
I'm confused. What's wrong with people wanting to take a fighting game seriously? It's almost like we have a community dedicated for those types of people. And I see you getting ready to type that comment. I swear to God, if you bring up the idea that balance determines whether if a fighting game should be taken seriously, my favorite fighting game of all time, Third Strike, is a cesspool when it comes to balance. <laughs> They are not traditional fighters and should not be categorized in the same way. We don't put games like Borderlands and Destiny 2 in the same category as Call of Duty just because they use guns and have multiplayer. I mean, I don't think anyone is trying to put arena fighters in the same box as traditional fighters. But when the genre as a whole trends, they all will be compared to each other regardless of how different they are. Yes, Borderlands and Destiny can be compared to Call of Duty in terms of gunplay regardless of how different they are. Glad this is happening. I have this conversation with friends trying to explain that and they think I'm crazy. They agree that traditional fighting games is more technical, but say Naruto has more mechanics than Street Fighter. You know what's funny about that is that Sparking Zero might actually be the most mechanically dense fighting game I've ever played. This game has three different guards for high, mid, and low. Perception, super perception, revenge counter, high speed evasion, super counter, super dash, or super dash that homes behind you, five different combo extenders, vanishing assault, speed impact, power impact, crash impact, blast impact, and box dashes. Just to name a few. Look, listen, I might be part of the FCC, but I love fighting games as a whole. And the fact that I have to make that clear is sad in itself. Traditional, platform, 5D, arena, I love them all. I grew up on every single type of fighting game you can think of, and my love for all of them will never change. All in all, I just wish the games of all of these communities could coexist without this constant debate of what's a fighting game and what isn't. Maybe one day, but until then, pick up whatever fighting game you want and enjoy it as much as we possibly can. Because at the end of the day, fighting games is some of the coolest shit I've ever experienced in my entire life. Stay safe, peace, and love y'all. Village, a dark world with street soldiers, thugs, and gangbangers. Just like the show you that last part of your life, but now it's changed to the new era. Sick, even more colder than whatever. Yo, it's time I moved on. I put my title up. Everybody got defeated. It's time you hung it up. Optional. The level you want, you better settle. This would have been the closest you got to the metal. If you plan to start from scratch, you gotta fight your way up. It's all about the victory and who's getting ate up. Survivors are always labeled the fittest. That's why you couldn't win this. I'm the living legend, bet tremendous My first priority got dealt with successfully Nothing more to prove in my corner No more testing me, I finished all my missions You tell me who the best could be Capcom and Lockdown, Infinity is the fighter So I'm on the door, now my life is much better Born to bigger things, but we hustle forever We cut your life short Plus you thought you was clever, it's all about the family We stay inside forever, yo I moved on Now my life is much better, now we on Some bigger things, but we hustle forever We cut your life short, plus you thought you was clever It's all about the family, we stay inside forever